Welcome back, Physical Science 20. So this is the uh, next part of the PW2. We looked at water waves uh, in the previous video, or uh, we looked at um, slinkies, ropes, springs, etc. Looked at standing waves. Um, we may have also looked at water waves. There's a video that's right before this. So we looked at wave transmission, uh, wave reflection, so waves coming in are reflected at an angle equal to the angle of incidence for reflection. So here, if we look at our incident waves, here are the crests coming in. We have an incident ray, which is perpendicular to those ray, ray crests. And the angle between that ray and the normal is equal to the reflected ray angle to the normal. And of course, the waves run perpendicular to that wave ray. So that's what we looked at. <coughs> if you look at sound reflection, we actually had touched on this already. We did this uh, question earlier on, um, shouting across a canning ha canyon, having sound reflect back, etc. So I'm going to have you, I think this is the next sheet that you have. Um, I'm going to get you to actually look at this question here. So the sonar question, question number 45, you could just simply call it reflection of sound. I would like you to try this question and hand it in. Okay, so that'll be the sound reflection component of that. All right, uh, images, plane mirrors. You would have done two labs involving plane mirrors. Uh, so now we'll just take a look at the conclusion of those and, and what we can get from that. <coughs> so they, they just go through a little bit of past with mirrors, etc. Artisans in the 16th century created mirrors by coating the back of a flat piece of glass with a thin sheet of metal and of course later on they coated that back part with silver and that's very similar how our mirrors are today as well. It's actually a piece of glass with the back part coated in silver. Okay, uh, if we look over here, the law of reflection, so those two labs you did, you would have looked at that. So looking at reflection, uh, if you hold up a book up to light, you'll see that no light passes through it. Recall that an object like this is called opaque. Opaque meaning that objects reflect part of the light and absorb part of the light. The energy of the absorbed light warms the book. The behavior of the reflected light depends upon the type of surface, of course. Consider what happens when you bounce a basketball. Now, of course, we've all played sports at one time or another. Uh, if, if I was a stick figure here and a stick figure here, you can bounce pass. And, of course, the angle at which it hits the floor or the floor or a perpendicular to the floor is equal to the reflection. Light behaves the same way as we saw in those two labs. It reflects with an angle of reflection equal to the angle of incidence. The same two-dimensional reflection relationship applies to light waves. Light reflects in the same way as water, a wave, or a basketball. Figure 2 shows a light ray striking a reflecting surface. The normal is an imaginary line that is perpendicular to the surface at the location where the light strikes the surface. The incident ray, the reflected ray, the normal ray are all on the same plane. So we can see this flat, if you imagine a big flat piece of paper, they all, all along, they, it all lies along that same plane, the normal, the incident ray, and the reflected ray, uh, which is perpendicular to the surface. Although light travels in three dimensions, the reflection of light is planar, in other words, two-dimensional. And of course, the law of reflection Angle I equals angle R, or vice versa. The angle that reflected ray makes, as measured from the normal to the reflective surface, equals the angle that the incident ray makes, as measured from the same normal. Okay? Uh, going through that, so and they just go through water waves here. And note, of course, that we looked at the wavelength does not change when it undergoes reflection. We have to change the medium itself to change that. Two types of reflection, specular reflection and diffuse reflection. So you can see specular reflection is also referred to as smooth surface reflection. So hitting a mirror or something that's really flat and polished, the incoming rays are parallel, the outgoing rays are parallel. But if I take a, a rougher surface, even a piece of paper, incoming rays are parallel, outgoing rays are not parallel. So we can easily see the image with this type of surface. But this surface, it appears blurry, and most surfaces uh, will ap appear that way because they're not all mirrors. You can see your reflection sometimes in a dark desk or something like that, but it's fuzzy because of diffuse reflection. 
So here, all, as mentioned, specular reflection is which parallel rays reflect in parallel. They came in parallel, they exit parallel. Rough surfaces, but what happens when we hit the, a rough surface? Uh, all the ray, light rays are parallel before they strike the surface, but the reflected rays are not parallel. This scattering of light of a rough, off a rough surface is called diffuse reflection. Diffuse reflection enables you to read this page from various angles. Uh, the law of reflection applies both to smooth and rough surfaces. For a rough surface, the angle each incident ray makes with the normal equals the angle that's reflected. So the law of reflection holds true, but as you can see, making the perpendicular at a surface changes, because here it's angled this way, this, therefore the perpendicular is angled like this. So after making the normals, the law of reflection holds true for each individual ray, but overall, those angles of reflection are different compared to other rays. Uh, so that's what's mentioned here. On a microscopic scale, however, the normals to the surface locations are not parallel. Thus, the rough surface prevents the reflected rays from being parallel. In this case, the reflected rays are scattered in different directions. With specular or regular reflection, as with the mirror, you can see your face. But no matter how much light reflects off a wall or a sheet of paper, you'll not be able to use them as mirrors. Recall that you can only see objects such as a sheet of paper. If, life, if light reflects off that object, oh, I guess that's it. I, get I got caught off there. Off that object. Oh, no, that was the end of the sentence. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, here we have an example, just basically dealing with the same thing. Uh, there are a couple of questions I want you to do here. You can simply call it the law of reflection on a piece of loose leaf. And I would like you to do questions one to five on this and hand them in. Fairly straightforward, just finished talking about it. You should have no problem with that, okay? And for number five here, it describes something here. Make a sketch of this description here and that'll help you out, okay? Uh, this part, objects and plane mirror images. So the labs, you would have touched on this as well. A plane mirror is a flat, smooth surface from which light is reflected by specular or regular reflection. And of course, that's smooth surface reflection we're talking about there. When studying illumination, the word object is used to refer to a light source. And an object could either be luminous, i.e. giving off its own light, or an illuminated source, so illuminated by some other means. For most of the light sources, light spreads out from the source in all directions. A mirrored surface can reflect these rays so that we can see the image. So, such as this one down here, seeing the bird. Now, in figure six, the bird is the object. Light reflects diffusely from all parts of the bird. Consider a point on the breast of the bird. What happens to the light reflected from this point? Some of the light rays travel from the bird to the mirror and reflect. What does the girl see? She sees the light reflected into her eye. Because her brain processes this information as if light rays travel in a straight path, it seems to the girl that the light follows the dashed line. So, to the girl, it appears that the beer bird is somewhere behind the mirror. But of course, due to common experience, she knows that, oh, this is a mirror, the bird is likely over here. But if you didn't know that mirror was there, if it was somehow hidden, she would think that this bird is behind here. Okay? So the bird, of course, is equal distance in front as the image is in the back. And uh, if I'm uh, choosing uh, how to see that. So from the breast, if I take this line going to the eye, line it up, dot it, solid here. It hits, it came from the mirror here, or apparently came from the mirror there, but it is actually reflected, join a line back to the breast here, and that's how the reflection actually happens. So that's, and we'll look at a scheme as to how to do that in a bit. Uh, the light seems to have come from a point behind the mirror just as rays diverge from the object, they also diverge from the image. We've only considered one point of the bird, but the girl in fact sees rays coming from all points of the bird. The combination of light rays reflected from the bird forms the image of the bird. It is referred to as a virtual image, which is a, which is a type of image formed by diverging rays. A virtual image is always opposite of the mirror from the object, and it's also virtual because you can't pick it up on a screen. If you put a piece of paper behind the screen, you won't be able to see the bird on the screen. Uh, the image is virtual because there are no light rays at the image location. So there aren't real rays of light coming from there. When we look at concave and convex mirrors, we will see that you can actually have lines co uh, come from the image, but in this case, it's not happening. And a key thing to note, 
plane mirrors only produce virtual images. Okay, we'll stop right there and we'll look at part two in a bit.